Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another monthly wrap up where I talk about all of the books that I have read in the past month. So this month, October, just gone, spooky season, beginning of autumn, blah blah blah, I didn't read that much. I don't really know what happened, I think I have got into a slight slump. I'm trying to get out of it, we'll see, I haven't read for a few days at this point. So either this video won't be too long or I will ramble about all of these books for quite a long time and it'll be just as long as usual. But anyway, let's get into it. Oh, all of the books I read this month I read on my Kindle um, and I was not prepared enough to charge my Kindle in advance of this, <laughs> so I'll just put pictures somewhere on the screen for all of these books. The first one that I read though was A Duel with the Vampire Lord, yeah, by Elise Cover. I rated this book three, I rated this book three stars. In case you are unfamiliar with this series of books, um, the Married to Magic series is um, a set of standalone fantasies by Elise but they're all set in the same world, universe, whatever. So within this world, there are different countries, borders, factions, where different fantastical creatures live. So there's where all the elves live, there's where all the vampires live, all the wolves, the wolf book hasn't come out yet, but anyway, they're all kind of set into their own different countries. And each book focuses on a different group of, fantasy creatures. This one of course is the vampire book, so um, you will have to forgive me because I remember very little about this book <laughs> and you will see why I remember very little about it in a moment. This follows our main character, is her name Florian? We meet our main character Florian um, she lives in a place called Hunter's Hamlet, which is like a little town, a village in the vampire kingdom. Um, she lives in a forge and will eventually one day take over the forge from her mother. It's her job to create all the armor and swords that the hunters use to fight against the vampires. Um, the vampires are separated from the, the town by a veil or something like that, some kind of mystical force field and they can only get through once a month on the full moon. It is Florian and her mother's job to equip all of the hunters in the town to with uh, silver weapons and armour so when all the vampires come through on the full moon they can fight them and, and hopefully people won't die. The book starts with, um, we're gearing up for a supermoon. I can't remember if they're actually calling it a supermoon, but it's a supermoon. This is the, the day when the, the vampire lord himself can come through and they're more powerful and it's, it's just more scary, <laughs> the supermoon. Oh, Florian's brother is a hunter as well, by the way. He's gonna go off to fight he is going to try and kill the Lord because apparently if you kill the Lord, all of the rest of the vampires die because they're like a hive mind type thing. You know, if you want to kill a snake, what do you do, huh? You cut off its head. Where does the fish rot from? The head. Take out the head and the whole thing goes down. That's why a fisherman always goes for the head. Ow! And he gives this potion type thing to Florian which is called the hunter's elixir and it basically makes him stronger and essentially a vampire is crawling through the streets she sees him she takes the elixir I don't remember what happens with that particular vampire but then she eventually finds her way to her brother who is fighting the lord and she gets taken back to the vampire realm through the veil and the rest of the story is her then understanding, bonding with, coming to terms with the vampire lifestyle as all of these stories follow that same pattern. So I mentioned one of the other books in this series, I can't remember when exactly it was, it was one of my last couple of wrap ups and, and I think what I feel felt about that book is very similar to how I feel about this one. Um, the thing that surprises me most about these books is that 
they're for they're standalone fantasy books and they feel slow and normally <laughs> it's tough to pack in what you need to pack in in a in a uh, standalone but with these i just feel like actually things could be sped up a little bit or certain things don't need to be there and, and especially this one because this one the vampire one was like 400 and something pages, maybe even 500 pages, whereas the last one I read was only 300. So I kind of forgave the elf one for missing a lot of stuff out. Whereas this one, the vampire one, was two, 100 to 200 pages longer. I still felt confused by the reveal and the lore and how everything made sense because it just hadn't been built up or explained particularly well. But then there were other things that just felt like they didn't need to be there and sort of could have, you could have made space for more exploration of the vampire lands and history and, and blah blah blah. In terms of characters, um, the main character is pretty cool, she's pretty awesome. Um, the love interest, the vampire lord, I just found quite, I didn't care about him at all. I didn't feel like there was enough building of his character to make me care about him. Um, and he was ugh, the most annoying <laughs> thing ever in the whole book. The thing that annoyed me most. So this isn't a spoiler. He, um, every single time Florian would say vampire, he would be like, uh, it's vampire. Every single time. And it was so irritating like it would be in italics and everything and i was like me as someone who really does care about the correct pronunciation of things shut up like you're even annoying me and <laughs> that's saying something with this just please stop no one cares i do understand that this is it serves a little bit of a purpose of her you know when she first comes to she's a human she's rejecting the vampires she doesn't like them she can't even pronounce the name correctly and as things progress oh if she pronounces the name correctly does that mean she's accepting them now i know it's supposed to be like that i do know that still pissed me off to no end there's also like a band of vampires that are like his inner circle i guess we didn't really get to know them very well they were okay they were just a bit bland background characters. The only other character we really got to was Florian's brother, whose name I don't remember, unfortunately. He was pretty cool as well, he was all right, but we didn't really see much of him either. So the ca again, the characters were just a bit there. Um, they weren't really filled out enough in, in, the, in the pages that they had available to them. <laughs> The plot was just kind of there as well. And and I think the main the main thing that I didn't like about this book and that really held it back for me was just that the vampires were shit. They weren't vampires. They were too nice and harmless and oh no, we don't bite humans without asking them first, which look yeah yeah. I appreciate it sounds bad me moaning about that but this is a fucking fantasy book about vampires i don't want them to be all nice and harmless you know there's supposed to be some threat there and there just wasn't i think that was the biggest just drawback for me was it didn't feel like i was reading a book about vampires because they were just kind of shit the the only cool thing that was mentioned um was the if they drink human blood, they can like see the human's future. And that was really cool. And I was like, oh, this will definitely return later, right? This will be a plot point that is brought back. No, they never fucking mentioned it again. He explains that it's a thing. They never, we never see anyone do it. It's never mentioned that anyone does it. It's never mentioned again after that in the book. All, all in all, this book, the, I think these series of books, they are easy to read. They're not, riveting but they're not awful you know what i mean which is why it's kind of three stars it's not bad enough to be worse than that but it's not fantastic they're easy to pick up and read and get you into something if you need to get into something and i know some people love these books so this might just be me but this this one in particular disappointed me but i think that's just because i love vampires and, and so a bad vampire book disappoints me greatly. Moving on to the next book, which was a better vampire book. 
in my opinion. <laughs> so the next book was My Roommate is a Vampire. And as soon as I saw the title of this book, I was like, I need that. I need that. That is going to be great. It was uh, great. <laughs> I rated it four stars. It's not, it's not a five star book. I'm sorry, it's just not. Um, it was really good though, but let me just tell you, I know that this book is bad. <laughs> this is the kind of book where you're like, this is ridiculous. What's happening right now is so unrealistic. Um, this is goofy, but I love it. It's that kind of book, at least for me anyway. I know I saw some less positive reviews of it, um, but I found it great. So let's talk about it. Our main character, Cassie, um, she's uh, trying to be an art teacher. She's got a few different jobs. She's kind of struggling financially. Um, her art is unconventional. Um, so no one wants to hire her as an art teacher. So she is looking for somewhere cheaper to move into because she's getting evicted from her place from missing rent. And she finds a listing that is suspiciously cheap on the rent by a guy called Frederick. So her friend Sam is like, look, just look at it. Just, you can't mess this up. What if it's great? Just go find out. So she goes and it turns out it was a mistake. It was not supposed to be listed that much, but Frederick's a cool guy. He's like, do you know what? It was my mistake. You can live here for that money. It's fine. We then start to see the odd relationship forming between Cassie and Frederick. So Frederick works nights, sleeps all day. She's not allowed, <laughs> I just remembered a part of the story. <laughs> I just remembered a part I'd completely forgotten about, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> he works nights, um, he sleeps all day. She's not allowed in his bedroom and there's a cupboard <laughs> that she's never allowed to go in because he has an embarrassing hobby he doesn't want her to see it. Hello, I'm editing Nikki here. Apologies for the terrible lighting and um, how I look and also the fact that I'm having to hold this camera because I've lost the um, stand for it. Um, but in case anyone was wondering what I was absolutely pissing myself laughing about at this point, in recording um this is it's not a huge spoiler but th i suppose this is a bit of a spoiler so if you care about spoilers for this book then just just skip to wherever i put it down here um so essentially the room <laughs> the room that cassie's not allowed to go into because um frederick has like a hidden or secret hobby that he finds embarrassing um, we find out later that vampires do have powers, so I can't remember what his Reginald, his friend, can fly. I think that's his power. And Frederick's power is that he makes fruit when he's nervous. <laughs> like, he just conjures fruit. I can't remember if it's only when he's nervous or if he can do it on demand. But, um, there's been a thing in the, in the book that he would just give her, like, nice bowls of fruit for her to eat and um because he was so nervous around because <laughs> he like fancied her um he was just uh, constantly conjuring fruit and had to hide it all in this cupboard <laughs> and it was just it was so funny to me i know some people were really annoyed about it just like this is the worst thing ever i found it hilarious so yeah i just realized i didn't actually explain what i was laughing about and thought some people might like to know so yeah there you go so they mainly communicate via like leaving notes to each other on the like in the kitchen um because cassie works all day sleeps all night he opposite so they don't really see each other very often they have a few interactions but it's mainly just leaving like notes to each other which is quite cute honestly you know we clearly know he's a vampire just from the title of the book but like the first interaction you get with him where, you, <laughs> where he's um like you're like you know you'd be sus if you if you didn't know just from the title what is it it was, it was so funny oh she was like i was gonna cook dinner but you don't have any pots i'm gonna go buy some and he's like what are you talking about pots and she's like you know to cook dinner and he's like 
Oh, all my pots are in the repair shop. <laughs> and she's like, what? And he's like, yeah, they're all getting, and he's like so proud of himself for coming up with this lie that he thinks is fantastic because he's a centuries old vampire who doesn't understand the modern world. And it was just silly. It was a silly, not serious book. And it's just little things like this. And there's a little bit of threat at one point in the plot and it is resolved <laughs> so stupidly. Um, but it's hilarious. It's, I loved this book so much because it was just stupid. <laughs> there's so many parts of this book that really made me laugh or that are just silly and ridiculous. But um, I don't want to just spoil the whole plot. So just just bear in mind, you know, this isn't, I'm not saying this is a fantastic book. It was fun, it's easy to read. And if you can go into it saying, this is, this is silly, this isn't supposed to be serious, I think you will enjoy it. <laughs> Because I saw a lot of reviews of people being like, oh, the resolution to that was just ridiculous. Like, that's that's stupid. And her being so okay with this, that's stupid. And I was like, it's just a silly fun book. Don't don't take it too seriously. It's and you'll have a good time, I promise. It was it was fun. Okay, so I don't know why I said okay like that. Okay, the next book I read this month uh was The Secret History by Donna Tart. Um this is a reread. I have read this book before, but I think I read it like maybe five years ago, maybe slightly less than that. I don't remember. And um, I didn't like it when I read it the first time uh, very much. Uh, so I thought I would reread it because uh, I keep getting aesthetic posts about it on TikTok and uh, it's Freddie Carter's favourite book. So I was like, well, I will guess I'll reread it then. Um, so I did actually do a like reading kind of vlog type video with that. It's not, I wouldn't know, it's not like a read with me. It's kind of a read with me, but mainly me just focusing on reading that book and my thoughts on it. So I'm hoping that I'll be out within the next few weeks so you can see my full thoughts on this. Um, but all I will say is that I did enjoy this more the second time round than the first time round. I rated it four stars this time, whereas last time I think I'd rated it three stars. So it's gone up one, definitely. Um, it, yeah, I, I enjoyed it more. I'm not gonna talk too much about it because one is secret history and everyone knows the secret history and two, a whole video about it in the next few weeks, I hope. So just keep an eye out for that. It's fucking time for this book. Uh, all right. The final book I read this month is Between the Vines. Is it called Between the Vines? It's called Between the Vines by Grace Saluna. I was looking forward to this book. It was, I saw the author promoting it on TikTok and it was described as grumpy sunshine, uh, cowboy. <laughs> I can't remember if it was actually described as cowboy, but it was like Southern America, Southern US, I should say. Uh, farm cowboy book. I don't know. And also at one point, the author then said, oh, and the main character looks like Bucky Barnes. And I was like, oh yeah, actually on the cover, he does a little bit. Let's sure it is going to be cozy it feels it felt like it would be autumnal it wasn't autumnal because the majority of the book was in summer but anyway i was like yeah cozy read let's do it a little romance that feels autumnal it wasn't autumnal anyway oh we were supposed to have a guest for this segment we're starting all of this again hang on <laughs> this is the stupidest fucking wrap up i've ever done anyway we have a guest for this segment you may be wondering why is Tom Hiddleston here as your special guest? Um, it's because this book is so clearly Marvel fan fiction. Now he doesn't actually make an appearance. Loki's not in it, but he's the only, oh wait, I've got Bucky somewhere. Hang on. No, we need a different guest. Hang on. Okay. Bucky, back there. I got myself a drink in my cup. <laughs> and just in case I get cold, I have my, Blanket. Now, you may be thinking, Nikki, what's the, what? Are you, what are you doing? <laughs> why? Why are you showing us your 
Tom Hiddleston cardboard cutout and your little Bucky bobblehead and your Captain America cup and blanket. And to that I would say, to prove to you that I love Marvel, to prove to you that I love Marvel and therefore should have loved this book. So, oh, let's get into it. So, the like I say, the author said, oh, the, the love interest looks like Bucky. Um, and then I started reading it and it became plainly obvious to me that this is just Marvel fan fiction. And now, let me tell you, I have no problem with that. I mean, for God's sake, I enjoy reading Ali Hazelwood books. And I'm pretty sure um, My Roommate's a Vampire, I think I saw somewhere that that was fan fiction beforehand as well. I clearly have no problem with reading fan fiction. I will read fan fiction as fan fiction or slightly adapted as published works. That's fine with me. Love eating cake. Um, I, have, I have no problem with eating cake. Here's the thing is I think eating cake is a genuine pleasure. And so I don't feel guilty about it. Very happy to eat as much cake as I choose. And I think people should eat more cake if they want. <laughs> don't if you don't. So firstly, what seemed like quite fun to me at first was like all of these little hints and picking things up that it was Marvel. So our love interest, because the, the female main character is clearly just supposed to be the reader or an original character. The male love interest is called Benny. Oh, he's called Bennett, and occasionally his friend calls him, um, I'm too hot, calls him uh, Benny, but for the most part he is just called Bennett. He is a veteran. I thought this was gonna become more of a thing. One of his arms is covered in tattoos, not the other one. I thought that was gonna become more of a thing. It didn't. Oh, the book's called Alpine Ridge. Bucky in the comics has a cat called Alpine. What else? Oh, he has blue eyes, which at some, I was so sure at some point there was gonna be a line to the, the words to the effect of his still blue eyes made me know where home was or whatever Anthony Mackie said to Sebastian Stan at one time. It's a, yeah. Those still blue eyes let you know where home is. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> That's my safe place. <laughs> but that wasn't that, which did surprise me a little bit because everything else was so on the nose. I was expecting this to be due. His best friend is called Steve. His last name is Ro is it Robinson instead of Rogers. <laughs> it's just so obvious. And he has this like very close relationship where they both clearly like each other with a woman called Birdie who I'm assuming is supposed to be Peggy. At uh, first, she, I thought she was supposed to be Nat, but then we meet a woman with short red hair called Kat, and I was like, oh, this is clearly supposed to be Nat. Uh, excuse me. Who else is there? Oh, of course. <laughs> a young, um, excitable teenager comes into a shop that the main character is in at one point, and I was like, oh, this is obviously supposed to be Peter Parker. And then he was like, oh, my name's Parker. <laughs> it was just so obvious. So a bit, to begin with, I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is fun. There's like fun little bits here for me as a Marvel fan to pick up. But then I was like, this is painfully obvious. Like I say, I have no problem with fan fiction being changed and published or fan fiction being fan fiction. I love fan fiction. Um, however, it wasn't enjoyable to me. That's the thing. And here are some of the problems I had with it, right? Also, as a warning, this is going to contain spoilers. If you care about what happens in this book and you would like to discover it for yourself, um, go ahead and do that. Just don't watch this part. This is the last book I have to talk about. So just don't watch the rest of the video. It's fine. If you don't care, then listen to me explain the things that pissed me off about this book. Firstly, I did not like Bennett at all. The one of the, his first chapter, he's saying he wants to kill a rooster because it's waking him up. You moved to a fucking farm. You have the, it's your rooster. Just either sell it don't buy it in the first place or grow up and deal with it. There was also this really weird part about him talking about him <laughs> dressing up in camo um, to try and shoot a raccoon that kept coming into his house. Um, not into his house, into his garden. It's hard for me because I am slightly basing this off of Marvel because obviously I know that it's Marvel fan fiction, but 
it just felt like it got the characters very wrong um and i don't know if the original fan fiction was like this but that but that's not bucky at all um <laughs> it's it might be bennett but i fucking hate bennett then he's i don't like him why is he the love interest he's annoying also okay no i'll come back to that the plot of this book if you're wondering is there is none there is no plot there's a sprinkling at one point of something that could have been plot but it's just like nah actually basically our main character camilla she just points randomly on the map and it's like yeah i'm gonna move there to alpine ridge we never get told why she's moving like if she's running away from something if something bad's happened if she just needs a change we never get told what possessed her to impulsively pick somewhere random on the map and just move there she buys a fucking vineyard like house i can't did it I think it was like 50 acres of land, vineyard, as well as like massive wine store. Where the fuck did you get the money for that? That's never explained either. Um, she buys that um, because she worked in a vineyard for two years, so clearly she has enough experience to run and own one entirely on her own. She moves there and it's a really small town and um, like a f there's some land separating her and the next person's house and obviously the next person's house is Bennett and Bennett hates everyone. She she meets uh, some other people in the town and they're all really nice and she's getting to know them, specifically Birdie she becomes quite close friends with. They become quite close friends um, and then because Birdie is really good friends with Steve, one night when they're like in a little bar they come steve and bennett come over to them and i don't remember what bennett says but it's something like he calls her he calls camilla bunny for some reason and then he's like oh it's because you're from the city and you're really naive and you're gonna get killed just like a rabbit would in the wild so they yeah they don't get off on on the best foot but like they keep being forced to do things together because you know why wouldn't they steve's like yeah of course me and bennett will help clean out your vineyard i don't remember how else they get forced together but eventually and when i say eventually i mean stupidly quickly bennett stops being grumpy and it's like actually i quite like her um and when i say quite quickly i mean literally within the first couple of his chapters because we get both points of view and then the rest of the book is just them being a couple together <laughs> that might sound nice you know that might sound chill but um honestly i didn't care i was so bored nothing interesting happens there's a plot point at some point where these big investors are wanting to buy the land between bennett and birdie no between bennett and camilla because you know they might want to build a load of houses or flats or something there big corporations building uh, or trying to buy small town land that could have been the plot point and it still would have been more in and it, you know it would have added it's not massive you know there's not peril involved but it would have added something but no they were just like yeah me ben and camilla they'll just buy land between them see the thing is if this was like i'm trying to think of an example i could read an entire however long this book was maybe like three four hundred pages i could read an entire 300 400 pages of stories just like exactly like this about jesper and wyland from six of crows nina and matthias um kaz and inej there there are characters from books that i would happily read just chill stories about them just going to a rodeo uh going to a farmer's market because these are the things they did i would be okay with that i think the main things here are there was no plot which i don't necessarily have a problem with but i didn't like the characters or care about them therefore you needed some plots to kind of carry it but there wasn't any therefore the characters should have been better so you were interested in them doing stuff but they weren't so and, and i think the main reason for this is this would work as fan fiction you don't need backstory you don't need high stakes plot happening you can quite happily read about two characters that you like or already know a lot about uh, excusing the fact that this was probably either reader insert or original character 
um, slash Bucky Barn. Um, but you can read that more comfortably because you already know the character, you're already connected to them, and you want more uh, material or um, stories about that character. But developing them as completely new characters, it doesn't really work as much. You need to have more of a backstory, you need to explain a little bit more of why they do certain things or why they are the way they are or change certain things about them. I, I think that's the main thing. If this had stayed as fan fiction, it probably would have been fine. I probably could have read this and been like, oh yeah, that's all right. Um, but it's not, and I don't think enough was changed for it to then be enjoyable, but enough was changed, you know? Enough was changed in that I didn't like the characters, but not enough was changed in that it was still very obvious who they were supposed to be. It was not not my style of writing. Um, like I say, it was quite jarring, repetitive at times. It didn't flow very well for me, I think is the thing. And honestly, by about 70% of the way through, I was so bored. When I was looking at um, Goodreads reviews of this book, they were very mixed. They were either, this is so good or this is awful. So if you've read this book, it's on Kindle Unlimited, um, by the way, if you are interested in trying it after everything I've just said, um, I'd be interested to know which camp you fell into or if you fell more into the middle, it would be it would be cool to know. That is all of the books I've read this month. It's not many and I've just rambled for a long time about that one. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a little bit more into reading again so I can discuss more next month. Let me know down below what you've read this month, um, what you've been enjoying, what you didn't like, and as always, if you've read the books that I mentioned this month, please let me know what you thought because I will always happily discuss books in the comments. My voice is going for some reason, so I'm gonna go now. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, thank you as always for watching. Have a good rest of your day and I will see you guys soon. Bye.